Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Championships, checking in with 1690 Orbit, legendary robots that are being built every year from Orbit. Of course, an incredible season so far, champions at Israel DCMP, and looking really good here at Championships. Take a look at Orbit, what they have to offer. Every single year, they bring some of the most innovative things uh, to teams as well. Of course, we'll be going through their entire journey. We've got some awesome props to showcase what they've been going through in the season. A lot of different positional controls. you got to love the software that goes into Orbit and everything that makes this a complete package. Let's learn more about their Charged Up robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Yo, right, let's start off talking about your uh, Swerve Drive on it. Talk to me more about what's gone into it. Any custom features for it as well, too? Love to hear more yeah. about Orbit. So we use our own custom Swerve Drive, which is different from most Swerve Drive in one major uh, element. In, it, that we is where uh, the bevel gear is directly connected. It's the same part as the wheel. We made it uh, custom wheels, uh, CNC machined. One thing that we really thought was important in this robot was the center of gravity. So our Swerve Drive is a bit higher than normal uh, in in, con in comparison to the to the chassis. Uh, our chassis is only 32 millimeters from the ground, and then we because we're so low, it makes it harder to go over the uh, over the charging station. Sure. Then we use our uh, intake bottom roller as a. An, Another wheel, so when you go over the ramp, uh, the the roll in the roller acts as another wheel. When the swerve drive uh, wheels don't touch the, so it kind of stabilizes it, right? As you it, go on, it helps you we us get over. Like the modules don't get uh, touch the ground anymore, and then this is what gets us over the ramp and. So let's let's move into talking about the intake on that. You mentioned uh, with that. So yeah. I'd love this here. Uh, give me a, a description of how your intake works. Uh, and then as we start to move into your robot, I know we'll show off a couple demos for it too. Yes. Yeah, so we use our, our, the same intake for both cubes and uh, and cones. Uh, with the cubes, we use, bo we use both this upper uh, roller to make sure that the, the cubes don't like get uh, thrown away when we get to them in a higher speed and the side uh, wheels are there to both indicate the, the cubes and as well as shooting them like one of the main uh, one of the main unique features of this robot is the ability to shoot cubes we shoot cubes both as a way to place them on the nodes as well as over the ramp into the uh, lower uh, nodes we use this flag here uh, to con be considered to be over the, in, inside the, the like community, community yeah. faster. So we make our, our cycle shorter and then uh, we can get cubes uh, from the feeder into the lower uh, nodes really fast. So. Uh, one thing I'd love to say is watching uh, the district championships, I thought something that you and Steampunk did so well was getting those cycles. Like you were just feeding them in, they just kind of push them in or your other line trying to do that too. And I think that versatility that you bring is so important to this game, especially with the new rule changes coming to the championships as well too. It has looked so good. Anything else on your intake that uh, you wanted to cover at all? Yeah, so the main point of this intake is like lo shorter the shorting the uh, cycles length. So it takes both the cubes as well as the cones from the ground in any orientation, and then the cubes, we can shoot them over the ramp, and the, the cones get uh, right to the, to the arm. So the our cubes, uh, cubes cycles are just like half a field long, uh, opposite to like, uh, to going over to the double substation 
then all the way in for the nodes. And it just increases your cycle, your, your amount of cycles you can do in a match, and we've seen that happen. It looks so good. Uh, Hadar, let's talk more about as we go into uh, your arm uh, as well, too, and that transfer area. Uh, talk about how this whole structure came through. You know, when, when your reveal video came out, I think so many people saw that yeah. and were just so inspired uh, by what Orbit had to bring. So we got to showcase more of this and demo it off, okay, too. Okay, so as you had mentioned, one of the most important things for us was to keep the center of gravity as low as possible. So we opted to use a differential wrist over here, as you can see, which allows us to move the end effector both in roll and in pitch while using only two robots that are at to only two motors that are at the base of the robot. As you can see here, um, these belts what are what move. They go up here and then they come down here to the, the differential wrist, and these are what move them. Uh, another thing is that our closing and opening of the claw is with a motor that's all the way down there and it uses a brake cable for that you use on bikes and a lead screw mechanism and it goes all the way down there which is really cool to help us keep the center of gravity as low as possible. Um, to be able to transmit motion from the bottom of the robot we use a lot of belts which allows us flexibility and they are also very light. So we have uh, tensioners all over the robot, as you can see here and here. Uh, another thing we wanted to do to make cycle times faster was being able to uh, place cones on both sides of our robot. So we have this limelight over here. It has a servo and it's connected with a soft print that has a hard stop. So even if the motor isn't very accurate, it always stops at plus minus 180 degrees and allows us to switch sides that we place the cones on whenever we want to without, um, and we have the limelight whenever we want to. Yeah, and speaking about, I'd love to hear more about uh, positional control with the arms as well too, Adam, if you can talk a little more about that. And then we can see a demo of that arm coming out too uh, while it happens, talk to me more about it. Okay, so let's start with the demo of a uh, cone intake. So as you can see, without me pressing anything, the arm automatically detects the orientation of the cone using the camera right here. It is connected to a Raspberry Pi. Then the arm automatically picks up the cone and is able to do all to auto orient it in the way that we want. So another cool vision feature that we have is our game piece detection camera right here. This camera allows us to see game pieces outside of the robot to help us align uh, the robot towards it. So the driver uh, goes to the general direction of the game piece and it can uh, auto-align it to it. As you can see here in our costume dashboard, the cone held by uh, your ad over there is shown on the field next to the robot and that's how we can uh, drive to there automatically. Um, uh, the way we chose to program the arm was to uh, set all of our states as a, uh, a graph, a graph data structure with a, a directional uh, vertices. So then we can uh, uh, run a BFS on it from the current position to the target position, and then the arm automatically finds the optimal route from one point to another. Um, to localize, we are using both the rotating line light uh, mentioned before, and our own uh, custom Apple Tag solution, which uh, runs on the same Raspberry Pi uh, uh, that the orientation camera runs on. Um, finally, to shoot over the ramp after the new rule change, we wanted to get just a little bit of extra power. So uh, one cool feature that we have found is uh, when we are breaking, uh, all of the kinetic potential energy of the robot actually transfers into electrical energy and uh, the voltage of the battery spikes up to 15 volts. Uh, and that helps us to get just the extra shot power yeah. to get 
all the way to the nodes. That's really cool. I yeah, love hearing that's about called the uh, regenerative braking, which is often used in uh, electrical vehicles. Yeah, absolutely. I also yeah. love to hear. I'm glad you talked to me more about uh, some of the uh, changes you are looking at making, uh, or that you did make for Worlds as well too. Uh, you know, looking at the game, I think it's so suited for your team, uh, yeah. and the changes have been made has been so beneficial for your team as well. Uh, I do want to start the wrap up uh, on this robot and hand it over to Do. Talk more about the uh, community uh, dashboard. Uh, area as well as some of the automation you're doing from that standpoint too. Yeah, so um, when entering the community, driver only need to press one button um, and then the robot will, uh, he needs, sorry, when entering the community, the drivers will need to roughly put himself in front of the node that he want to score in and then he'll just press one button, the, dro the robot will drive automatically to the, to the target and then he will score. Um, yeah, so this is our custom dashboard. Um, this year, uh, we chose that the uh, that the operator will decide on the on the height of the placing, like high, mid, or low, as you can see, and it, it can also uh, like uh, decide and uh, like blink to the to the human player which game pieces we want. So, like if we want cube on the mid, you can see the the LEDs are are purple and yellow for cubes. Um, we can we can also uh, change our angle and velocity for the sh for shooting parameters for shooting cubes and uh, like fix faults during the match and reset sensors and uh, add game pieces and remove and etc etc. Et um, we also have a brand new tool. Oh, sorry, this is your, this is our logger, our uh, orbit logger. Um, when we're coming off a match and we're having some problems and we need to debug. To, and we need to debug. Um, we're using this tool. It it logs all of uh, the important things in a robot into a CSV file, and then we can uh, we can see w with the UI uh, some stuff. So we can see an autonomous being played. This is from our last match. So this is uh, an autonomous on the bump side. Yeah. So I'll yeah. So this is a match. So you just get all that feedback every single match. You can go back and look at that. Yeah. That's, so that's we awesome. can see also like uh, wanted actual graphs and uh, some other stuff. And yeah. That's so cool to see on the, you know, like I said, we talked back before, like when your reveal video came out, how inspirational that has been to the entire first community for it. And everything you bring is so just like, you just raised the bar, I think for the entire first community as well too. So thank you so much for showing us about that. Orbit, we wish you best of luck here. But every single year, I love seeing the robots, love hearing more about it, and I love the inspiration you bring the first for that too. So thanks a lot, and good luck here at the World Championships. Thanks. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.